last no way saturated on it also take it there you go instruments instruments are set up so there are two instruments in this chapter we should not call them instruments a device you can say okay or let's say a, it's a big setup so a device also is not a proper word so we are going to discuss uh, a machine let us say which is used to accelerate these subatomic particles okay this machine is called cyclotron okay after cyclotron we'll be discussing the galvanometer moving body galvanometer okay so all of you write down cyclotron see i have not gone in sequence the way it is there in your notebook so i have don't follow the ncert as such sequence i have done something from behind then ahead then in between so whatever makes sense to me i am going according to that okay so since you are hearing me it is better that you refer your notes from this chapter or at least follow the sequence which in which we have discussed the things for this chapter all right so cyclotron i will draw the setup i draw the setup all of you please copy this then we will discuss what it is
Okay? This is what it does. Now, if you look at these two surfaces, they are what? Like a capacitor. This, these flat surface and that, these flat surface. They are like capacitor or not? They are like capacitors. And there is a potential difference between them. There will be electric field. Between these two, there will be electric field. But inside the electric field is zero. Okay? Now, right now, let us say electric field is like this. The electric field switches. The next moment it switches its direction. Okay? So electric field can only exist between the deals. And you are switching it. Right? Now what happens is that you keep a charge over here. Charge Q is kept over here. Suppose you just release the charge. What will happen to this charge? It will accelerate or not? Will it experience magnetic force? Yes. Since it has less, it initially it will not. But there is an electric field. It will create its velocity. But as soon as velocity comes, magnetic force will start acting. Magnetic field will try to make it a circle. But electric field will try to change its velocity or increase its velocity. And as its velocity increases, radius increases. So it will write a spiral here. And then once it goes in, then only magnetic field is there. Yes or no? So inside it will be exact circle, part of the circle. Then it comes out and then again because of electric field accelerate, the radius increases. So like this, it just spirals. So the magnetic field just turns it around, electrical field gives it kicks. Yes, like that you can say. Here you have a deflector which takes this sort of particle out. Say a deflector here. Okay, now uh, why this is how this is possible? Because time period of revolution is fixed, which is 2 pi m by q b. So I know exactly when the charge particle will come out of the D. I don't need to know the radius or where it is. I don't need to track anything. I know exactly how many milliseconds it will take for electron to come out, no matter what is its velocity. Okay? So I feed in the oscillator that you know after every a few milliseconds you should switch the voltage. Why switching of voltage is required? Because right now, let us say the charge particle is going like this. So if a kick is required, as Mr. Bharat said, then you need to have an electric field like this or like that. Depends on the charge of the particle. It is electron, let us say. Then you need to have an electric field like that. But suppose it is a positive charge. Then you need to have an electric field like that. Then when it comes out, its velocity is like this. So again, if you want to create a kick, you need to reverse the direction of electric field or not? So that is why it oscillates. Otherwise, what will happen? It will accelerate here and decelerate here. It will remain there only. Getting it? Or you can just switch on here and switch off there. If you don't want to change the polarity, then only one kick will be there above, not below. But if you want to kick it from both sides, you will have to have electric field like this, and when it comes out, electric field like that. Okay? Right? So you can see that in one revolution, one time switching should happen in one complete revolution. Okay? So the switching frequency should be same as frequency of revolution. This is the time period. So frequency will be what? 1 by time period, which is QB by 2 by n. This should be the switching frequency of the oscillator. Understood? Suppose the, the diameter of the D is diameter or radius? Let's take. Suppose the radius of the D is R. Okay? The radius of the D is R. Can you find out if mass M is given and what else? Mass M is there, Q is there, and magnetic field is given. Can you find its maximum possible kinetic energy? when it comes out try doing it if I tell you the radius 
Its velocity is fixed. So you don't need to know anything else. You don't need to know what is the electric field. Okay, so more is the radius, more is the velocity, and there is a direct correlation between the radius and the. We know that the R is mv by qb. Yes or no? So qbr is m into v square both sides divided by 2m. So this is the kind of energy q square, v square, r square by 2m. Okay, but isn't it strange that the maximum possible kind of energy does it depend on the electric field? Suppose I decrease electric field then and I increase electric field. What is the kind of difference I will observe? There is no difference in kind of energy. Yes or no? Yes. Independent of it. If the size of the D is fixed. Okay. Now if I decrease electric field, what will happen? It will take more time to reach that uh, higher state. Okay. Higher state. So these spirals turns will be closer to each other. It will turn more number of time because acceleration due to electric field is slower. So radius will not go to a very high radius immediately. That's the only difference. It come out slowly. Okay? Slowly doesn't mean that it will take 10 hours. It's just like fraction of like 2 seconds or 10 seconds, 5 times more time. Okay, so this is the well, let's take one numerical on cyclotron. Direct formula, okay? Direct formula substitution. I go all of you get it right. Okay. Here is the question from the NCRT. Cyclotrons of oscillator frequency. Cyclotrons oscillator frequency is 10 megahertz. What should be the operating magnetic field B for protons? Oh. Stop. Only I will speak. The radius of the D, it is white only. Yellow. The radius of the D is 60 centimeters. Are you going to find a difference between this color and that color? Yes. No. So you are not colorblind. You are. What is the kinetic energy in mega electron volts? Okay, for the electron that get generated out of this cyclotron, charge of a proton is this. Mass of a proton, all SI in it. And one MEV is also given that it is for you. Find out how many MEVs. B. That's wrong. That's again wrong. 0.6 Yes. Why do you have to get a wrong answer in such questions? 0.6 Ten. 0.66 Tesla is the answer. So, yeah. 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 Oh. Two 0.66 or yeah. 2 pi. Time period is 2 pi m by qb. So frequency is qb by 2 pi m. This should be equal to 10 megahertz times power 7. You get the value of b. 0.66. Everything is given. 
find out the kinetic energy in MEVs. Actual water can come. Do it properly, get it right. What's the point of doing it? Going fast and get it wrong. Did you then create? Oh, 